Hi there, Evan here with Crypto and Markets for Wednesday, February 28th, 2018. Of course, the big news broke a few days ago. Um, Enbang, the, the uh, insurance company out in China, their uh, former CEO was arrested on um, economic crimes, fraud charges, whatever you name it, they really threw the book at him. By the way, there's a great article descri- describing all this in Better Dwelling. Mike Martins, in fact, had a great video on this a few days ago. If you haven't seen it already, I'll go ahead and link those down below. But one part of the video really caught my eye here. And I think it really speaks to a bigger story. Look, part of what happened here was... Anbang was double-counting capital reserves on their balance sheet. Which means, effectively, they were reporting essentially twice the money than they actually had. Now, of course, look at the deeper problems in the Chinese banking system the last couple of years. I mean, how many people there were taking out uh, no-income verification loans? Remember the, the, uh, the program CIBC ended recently with, the, um, with their foreign buyer program, 35% down, don't even have to verify your income? Well, there was a lot, lot, lot more of that stuff, sorry, actually going on in China. Now, of course, we know that starting about late 2016, that credit impulse has really dissipated as uh, the Chinese government saw what was going on and, in essence, has been trying to stop it ever since. But again, I mean, if you look at uh, the credit impulse, you also look at another thing as well, too, and this is the basis for my trade I put on in September. To hide what's going on, the Chinese government has been under understating inventories of metals in the country. Like, for example, it came out on a chart here, I think, around a month ago. The amount of iron ore Chinese, the Chinese have on ships offshore is at an all-time high. So what, were, what, were the Chinese, what was the Chinese government doing trying to cover this up? Push everyone to take all their assets offshore. Oh, I don't have it. I don't have it. Well, like I've always said, you take one thing, you transfer it somewhere else, it still exists. I mean, the problem hasn't gone away, and people have actually really woken up to it this year, especially in the commodity markets. I mean, if you look at the double tops and all the industrial metals, it kind of shows you what's going on here, right? But anyhow, enough of that. Look. Now, if this is what happened here, the Enbank CEO, regardless of what you think and of politically and everything else, of course, the Chinese are still communists, so hey, <laughs> I would never want to live in a communist regime, right? But, but anyways, yeah, if they were double counting capital reserves, yes, of course, he's going away for a very long time for fraud. But what's the bigger story here? M- there's a ton of other banks. In fact, in their whole Chinese banking, in the whole Chinese banking system, all this is going on everywhere. I mean, how many how many of these no income verification loans are are now in default? I mean, of course, for example, in uh, Beijing and uh, Shanghai and other tier one cities in China, fifty percent of the uh, of the homes and whatnot that were built in the last three years remain empty. The whole thing was a fraud. Take their money, park it off some somewhere outside the balance sheet. No one sees it, and that's what they were. That's that's what these um. That's what the, the heavy hitters and everything, everyone else is getting away with in China for so long, right? All keep taking all this money, and only when uh, the Chinese government saw that uh, the the capital was eroding because no one was paying it back. Only then did the show end. And only when they when they dug down deep into all these balance sheets and saw how little capital they actually really had, only then did the capital controls come in place, right? Yeah, yeah, the media says, oh, they're getting uh, tough on corruption. BS. The only reason why they put all these uh, capital controls in place. It's because they knew, they, knew, they, knew, they knew what was going on. They knew the whole thing was a Ponzi scheme. 
They saw these banks had no money and they panicked. That's that's all it is. Now, um, now what do I think of my industrial metals trades based off this? I still think they're good to go. All this is starting to come out now. Even the, even the uh, stock market sees what's, what's going on and how the Chinese, well, they've been doing this for years, to be honest, how much the Chinese have underinstated their industrial metal inventories trying to cover all this stuff up. Again, it may sound a little bit conspiratorial, so to speak, but what's the number one in input into any home that you do? Copper. Other Number two, other industrial metals. For example, steel. Number three, of course, is lumber, but there's other things going on with that one. I won't get into in this video. But again, what I'm really saying here is, I'm not saying the Anbang uh, story here isn't a real story. All I'm saying is, and I've been covering this on my channel really since the beginning, there's a deeper story here. The deeper story is the Ponzi scheme is up in China. And also, of course, too, what else were they doing? It's even mentioned this a bit in this article. Oh, take out um, a no-income verification loan from China, come to Canada, come to the U.S., come to the U.K., come to Australia, to a certain extent, come to New Zealand, too. And buy real estate. I mean, what happened with CIBC? How many of those of those programs do you think are out here? Or also, remember, too, I saw this a lot in the uh, Toronto area as well, too. I mean, Vancouver, you saw this a lot also. How many people were you seeing in 2016 with all cash offers? How many foreigners, how many, how many people from China were coming in buying homes on all cash offers? You wonder now where they got the money, right? They got the money off one big Ponzi scheme. But again, as I've mentioned in previous videos, in late 2016, when the capital controls were implemented in China, again, it hasn't been, it's been slowly in decline ever since that point. And you can see it even in the numbers too. But really, it goes to show you how much this has affected things. And really how the decline in the Chinese credit cycle is becoming and ultimately will become, as I've mentioned in previous videos, the biggest story this year. Again, I'll go ahead and leave it here. I gotta head to work myself. Y'all share this video. Y'all subscribe. Y'all leave a comment down below. Y'all hit the like button. Take care, everybody.